It's your life. It's your business. You have to treat it as such. Welcome to another episode of Candid Conversations hosted by your truly tech coach, Ralph, where we are engineered to win. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about being business minded in your life, in your personal life, and not, you know, not just in your personal life, in everything that you do. It's, it's like we can go to work, right? And I don't even know if I can say this because so many people, they go to work and they, they don't take it seriously, right? And then they get upset when they get on the chopping block. But let's focus, right? If you are committed to the work that you do, a lot of people, they do go to work and they work hard, right? But then once they leave work, everything goes out the door and they don't treat their life as the business that it is, right? They value the place that they go to work, then they buy then their own life, which doesn't make much sense, right? So what I want to communicate to you today is you need to treat your personal life as a business. It is your business. It is your brand, right? And if you want to accomplish anything, then you have to see your life as a business. Everything you do is a business. So what I'm telling you is you need to be business minded and you need to apply it to everything. So what does that mean to apply it to everything? So when you go to school, if you're in school, right, that's a business. If you are in a relationship, that's a business. If you are self-learning or learning something, a boot camp, whatever it is, right, that's a business. Any extra activity that you're doing, that's business, right? When you go to work, that's a business. Everything you do is a representation of you. And you want to put forth the best image, a true image, but the best image, right? So you need to have the right mindset, right? I have I've hear people saying, oh, yeah, like that mindset is good for this situation and that situation, but, you know, not for relationships. How, how does that, how does that, um, makes sense. So are we going to be logical in other other situations in what we're doing? But then when it comes to uh, interpersonal communications and relationships and things like that, oh, everything goes out the door. Now we don't rely on logic. We, we, we rely on emotion. From what I've seen, whenever we, we make decisions based off of emotions, that's when we make the worst decisions, right? So you have to be very, very logical in everything that you're doing. You have to be business-minded because there are deals that if you put a, a price tag on it, a monetary value, there, were, there is no way that you would take it. And, and that's in everything. It's, it's, not, it's not only in like, oh, the offer that they're giving you. Like if they tell you, oh, work for this amount of money and you're like, oh, no way, that's too low, right? But then in other situations that we put ourselves in, it's, it's still the same offer, but it's masked in a different way. And, and, and then we make the wrong decision in that case, right? Like we, we see with like when people are going to purchase homes or purchase vehicles or whatever it is, or shopping at the mall, whatever the case may be, right? And then they run up the debt because they made decisions based off their feelings instead of based off a business decision that would be the most beneficial for them, right? You need to treat your life as the business that it is, right? In all aspects of it. It's not, it's not, you don't compartmentalize what's business what's a business deal and what is a an emotional deal i don't believe there should be uh, emotional deals do emotions like um do emotions come into some effect yes but they should not be the leading um the, the leading decision right it, it can't be because if that's the case if 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 you have to go to work right and you have people um depending on you who um like you say you're going to get something done right and then because you don't feel like going to work you don't feel like doing it just call off and you, you don't you don't show up, right? You don't show up for your meetings because you don't feel like it. Then it's going to be disastrous. Not only will you be unemployed, right? You, then you're you're going you're like you're just going to be winging it. And so many people like they wing it, and and the the results of their lives show for it, right? So you treat your job as a business, but do you treat your health as a business? Are, are, are you are you eating the right things? Are you getting the right amount of sleep? I'm not saying I, I 
I personally don't believe that um, people necessarily need eight hours of sleep. I believe that you need the right amount to be effective, right? Because you need to use every single minute to the best of its ability, right? Do the things that is going to empower you to continue to push forward. That's how I see it, right? Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think, oh, no, you actually need 10 hours of sleep. I, I, I just, I, I sleep as long as I need. I'll sleep till noon if I have to, right? Good for you, right? But like I said, I'm allergic to complaining and I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it, right? If you don't, if you don't have the result that you want, then you have to make adjustments. You know, so many people, they're, they're, they desire the results, right? They desire the results, but they do not make the necessary adjustments to achieve those results. And that's because I, I believe they don't see it as a business. I created this very, very small application that I'll probably expand on in the future, but I, I call it the time cost calculator, right? And it's based on off a formula that I heard, right? And the formula goes that, um, and I heard it from the content creator Anton Daniels, right? And, and the formula goes, how much is your time worth, right? The value, the hourly value of your time, right? And the formula that he says is it's not it's not the total amount of compensation that you make from your job and then you divide that by um, 40 hours in a week, right? To tell you, okay, this is your hour, your hourly wage. No, it's the total amount of income you bring in for the year and you divide it by 8,760, right? That's how many hours are in a year, right? And based on that, that brings you that that tells you like how much an hour of your time is worth, right? So now, and and so many people have argued with me with with that formula, but I don't I don't care. I love that formula, and and I create a little application that so that I can put in. All right, what I'm doing, right? Is it worth it? Should it be delayed to a better time, or can I should I go ahead and do it, right? And, and I'll I'll link that little application in the I'll link that little application in the description of the video so you can check it out, right? But I find it immensely valuable. And, and that's what, oh, not to get sidetracked, but I always tell people who are looking to, to get into the tech field and stuff like that, build something that's useful to you and maybe other people will find it valuable as well, but build something that's useful to you, right? But to, to get back on track, right? The, the concept of seeing what, you, like seeing your life as a business, it's going to help you make better decisions that's going to bring you into the places that you're looking to get to. Right. Uh, and and I, I think like so many times we just wing it and we don't take it seriously. We don't take our life seriously. We think that we have so much time until we get to the end of it and we look back and we're like, hmm, I could have done more. You know, um, some people say, oh, you know, how about the people who, who get to the end of their lives and they're like, oh, um, I just wish I would have spent a little bit more time with my family. You know what? I don't know about them. Like when, when we get there, we'll see. But I, the way that I see it now, right, is like, what am I leaving behind for those coming behind me, right? Am I going to be remembered for not going after it, not pushing forward, not trying to achieve? Or am I going to be remembered for, you know, he was there. Or am I going to be remembered at all, right? Who knows? Like the, the way that I see it is it's like you have to make the right decisions and you have to teach those who are around you, those who are coming behind you, how to make the right decisions, how to move the right way so they can be in the best position, right? We, we look at, we look at all, like we like to talk about these families who have been doing, uh, who, who've, who've had a certain amount of wealth for like generations upon generations, right? And you know, some people look down upon them. Some people look at like, how do they do it, right? But the thing is, they like you know, and, and the pioneers of those families of those industries and things like that, they they are business minded first, right? And they teach those in the family to be business minded as well. Whether it's in like like the things that they go to school for, the things that they're learning, the industries that they get into, the relationships that they have right? It's business first. I'm not saying it's business only, but it's business first, you know? And with that business first mindset, you can make better decisions for your family, for yourself, for, for your career. 
You know, uh, I was just listening to to Robert T. Martin talking about you know clean code. You know, the, um, Robert T. Martin, uh, Uncle Bob has been been programming for probably like over fifty years, right? And he's saying like you know you can tell when code is good when the person building it actually cares about what they're doing. And to me, that's like seeing this thing as my own, right? If I was the CEO, right, would I be comfortable with the effort that I'm putting in to sell this for people to use it? Would I use it? You know, and, and that's a measure that I go by as well. It's like, what I'm working on, would I be comfortable using it? You know, and, and that's what I mean by like business minded. And, and it's like, what is the quality of work that you're putting out? And that's why I say you need to see yourself as a business. You need to treat yourself as a business. You need to make sure that the way that other people are treating you is as a business, right? You don't just let them, you don't, you, you, you don't just water wave through and, and not take things seriously because, because other people aren't taking it seriously. If other people aren't taking it seriously, you need to extract yourself and you need to focus, right? So what I, what I also want to talk about, right, is how, because a lot of people, like, they, they might just not know, right? They, they, it, it sounds like a good concept. I, I like how it sounds, treating myself as a business, valuing my time, seeing what the value of my time is. And, and applying it to making the right decisions at the right times on what needs to be done. It's not saying that, oh, oh, because, you know, um, this is the value of this. Like, oh, I'm not going to spend time with my family. It's no, definitely you have to spend time with your family. It, that's also, that is also a business decision because spending time with your family, that is going to lead to other things that's going to help and everything like that. Right. So it, 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 a lot of people make it seem like, oh, you know, it's like it's money over this. It's money. No, it's knowing the details, knowing the metrics. Right. Which leads me into our next point. Right. Being business minded, what do they do in businesses, right? They set goals and then they they track the goals based on the metrics, right? In 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 pretty much all fields, right? But being that I'm in the tech field, we have something we call KPIs, key performance indicators, right? And those are like we we are we have some key details that we're we're, we're tracking to make sure that we are on, like we're on the track that we want to go on. If we are not um, on that track, we know the adjustments that we need to make, right? So we need to set goals, right? So many people, they hate, they absolutely hate setting goals, right? And, and that's one of the first things that I do when I start coaching people. I'm like, all right, we need to set goals. What is it that you're looking to accomplish? And guess what? I don't set the goals for you. I have you set the goals for yourself. And then, and then what I say is, okay, now, how are we going to achieve those goals, right? And then you say, how are you going to achieve it? And I say, all right, I need a detailed breakdown of exactly what you're going to do right? Week over week, you know, to get there, right? And then when we meet, we're looking at those, those KPIs, those key performance indicators to see where are you at? Are you on track to get to where you say that you want to be? It's not where I want you to be because it's your life, right? It is your life. So I'm tracking where you want to be and I'm helping you achieve your goals. There are not my, because here's, if they were my goals for you, you wouldn't do them. The thing that sucks, though, is your goals for you, you barely do them. So how could I ever set goals for you, right? And I think that's part of the problem that, like, that happens at, at work and stuff like that because um, although they'll ask you to set some personal goals, but when they set the goals for you and you're like, you, you, you will achieve them maybe, but it's going to be the bare minimum, like just exactly what you need to achieve those goals instead of just going out there and doing it for you, right? It's like we feel like we're doing it for somebody else because they set it for us, right? But no. And that and that is why I say, all right, what is it that you want to do? Where do you want to be in X amount of years, right? And what are you going what does it take for you to get there? And what are you going to do to get there? And then we're going to like break it down point by point. And okay, I need to achieve this by this week. I need to achieve that by that week. Okay. Now we're going to we're going to go back and make sure that we're on point. Do we need to address anything? Are we uh, do can we add something to to make it better, you know, and we, we, we are going to break it down and we're going to investigate, right? But that is the point 
of being business minded and setting, having goals and metrics. And if you apply that to everything, if you apply that to everything, you will see so much success in every single thing that you're doing, like including your relationship, right? Including your relationship. You say, okay, where are we now? Where do we want to be? What do we need to do to get there? Um, like whether it's for the health of, of the relationship, whatever the case may be, right? And that's the same thing for your health. You say, okay, I'm currently here right now for my health. And what I'm, uh, I want to be here in a year, right? What do I need to get, do to get here? Okay, this is what I need to do, right? All right, so uh, I'm going to do this. But okay, now let me break it down. Um, every two weeks, I, I'm, I, uh, I need to be here every two weeks, and this is what I'm going to do to get there. And I follow it meticulously, meticulously, right? Um, and, and once the two weeks are up, then you review, okay, how did the two weeks go? Um, did, I re- did, I, did I accomplish what I set out to do? All right. Um, do I need to adjust? Do I need to pivot? Do I need to? Uh, and based off that feedback loop, that's how you just go, right? Some people just like you can do it weekly. You can do it every two weeks. It, it's up to you, which we're going to touch on in a little bit, right? But the point is that is how you manage your life as a business because you have your goals, you have the metrics that you're tracking your goals to make sure that it's working, and then you start to implement a system, right? The system that I just mentioned, right? That is the agile methodology. It is a very, very popular um, software development methodology that you can actually apply to yourself. I remember um, I had, like I, I I was teaching someone about it, and they were in a totally different field. But I said, you know what? You can still apply the concepts of agile and Scrum to the to what you're doing, right? Because it's a methodology that works across industries, and you are setting up um, you're setting up your 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 plans. Like, okay, this is what we want to do for two weeks we're, we're going to like okay daily where, where are we at what are we doing and how are we at achieving our goals do we have any blockers and how can we alleviate those blockers and 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 that is that is part of the agile methodology i will have a patreon video that's going to go more in depth on that and how you can use that to effectively get things done right how to effectively get things done right so that is going to be a patreon video but to continue in this video when you implement the system, now you have a you have a strategy to follow, right? And something that will give you feedback on a regular basis. And, and you check yourself, like you, at the end of two weeks, you, you look back and say, okay, how did the two weeks go? And right, if, what, however many weeks you want to use, but I, w- I wouldn't recommend going more than two weeks, right? But you're also checking yourself daily to say, okay, what do I need to do today? What did I, like, what did I do yesterday? What do I need to do um, today? Do I have any obstacles and how do I unblock those obstacles, right? So- that is part of the, the methodology of the system, which I will break down on a Patreon video, as I said. But then the next thing we need, we need the necessary tools so that we can actually make this happen. Uh, uh, and, and guess what? Sometimes you might have to invest a little bit because you're investing in you, which is you're investing in your business, right? We, we have to, like, we can go to the mall and we can see whatever, some shoes, a dress, whatever, um, and, and we're like, oh, I got to have it. And then you buy it where that money that you spent could have been investing in you in getting the necessary tools to help you accomplish your goals, to fund your business. You're investing in your business, right? And what are some of the necessary tools, right? So like I was mentioning, right? Learning about agile methodology, doing sprints, having a board so you can track your progress of what you need to do. And, and, and that way you can say, okay, what, like what have I done? And all right, so this is these are all the things I have to do. These are the things that are in progress. These are the things that are done. And then you can see, and and you can like when I, when I do this video for for the agile methodology, I pro- and and I might even do it live, do a live about it too, so you can ask questions about it, so you can help implement it. But the point is, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, what can I get accomplished in two weeks? And it's going to take some time to to figure out. Your capacity, your your capacity, your capability. But it's like, okay, what can I do for two weeks? All right, these are these are going to be the tasks that I'm going to, or or the stories that I'm going to do for these two weeks. And you're going to give them points, the level of effort that it takes, and and you say, okay, now all right, this is done, this is done, this is done, and and now it's like you look back and say, okay, I didn't get this done. This is going to have to roll over to the next sprint. So um, so you adjust. Like, it's it's so much, but the agile methodology definitely works. I've been using it for the past ten years now, right? Um, and when done right, it is highly, highly effective. And, and, and it's not like, it's not, if you can do it 
with a with a team of people. I, I've been on a team of like ten, um, ten people, like ten, to, like with a mixture of developers, scrum master, product owner, um, QAs, right? And we're able to get a lot of work done, right? And currently in my role, like we're doing scrum and we're getting a lot of things accomplished. If you can do it with a group of people, why can't you apply it to your own life? I think it's a lot easier to apply to your own life if you are doing it by yourself, right? Because you, there's only one person that needs to do what they're supposed to do, and it's you. It is you who has to do what they're supposed to do, right? So you need to, you, you need to implement a system, and you need the, the necessary tools and resources to make it work. Because if you just say, oh, this is what I'm going to do, but you have no, nothing to track it by, nothing, to, no, nothing to, um, to know what you need to do and to track it and say, okay, this is done, this is not done, this is in progress, then it's, you're, like, you're just going to have it up here and you're, you're going to forget. You're, not, you're, not gonna, you're going to have no way of tracking your progress to see like, oh, wow, like a year later, you look back at where you're at and everything that you did, like, oh, wow, I did a lot. But a lot of times, like, and I think the biggest problem is, right, we don't like accountability. Because if we track ourselves, we will be holding ourselves accountable. But if you start this and then you just fall, you just don't do what you're supposed to do, and you look back and you're like, oh, you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel terrible by not doing what you're supposed to do, right? And we hide from that feeling of, uh, we hide from the feeling of feeling terrible, <laughs> like to, to put it uh, for lack of words, right? You, you don't want to feel terrible, right? And because of that, you don't track. But I would rather feel terrible. And know what I need to improve on instead of not knowing anything at all and just floating through life, right? So many people are floating through life. I don't want to float through life. And I don't want you to float through life. If you subscribe to this channel, right? I don't want you to float through life. I want you to go out there and, and, and do everything that you need to do in all aspects of your life to be successful. And I believe that the only way you can do that is if you manage your life as the business that it is, Right? And it's not all about money. It's not, it's not about money at all. It's about being highly effective, getting things done, you know? So, I mean, that's how I see it, right? And, and to, to wrap this up, right? So, like I was, I was alluding to, you need to have regular reviews of your progress, right? You're going to, like, like I, like I mentioned, right? So, we'll, we'll start from the granular and we're going to go to, to, the, to um, a more wide view, right? So, you're going to start with like, and, and I'll expand this more in Patreon, right? But you're going to start with a, um, a daily standup, right? Saying, okay, what is it that you, what is it that you did yesterday, right? Tracking your progress from yesterday. What is it that you need to do today? And do you have any obstacles, right? If you have obstacles, then what is it that you, um, what, what can unblock those obstacles? Who can unblock them? What can unblock them? What do you need to do to get them unblocked, right? So you can continue with what you need to do today, right? And, and I would say do that as early in the morning as possible. Don't wait. Don't wait till midday or something like that. Do it as early in the morning as possible so you can have a, a game plan and you can go out there and get it, right? So the, the next thing is you are going to have a, every, like, so depending on how long you do your, your sprints, right? Either a week Two weeks. I don't. I don't advise going more than two weeks, but you know, um, I would say you need to plan your sprints. What are the things that you're going to get accomplished in those two weeks, right? And when, once the, once those that two week period starts, okay. So now that you're going to do your daily check ins, your daily stand ups, and once those two weeks are done, then you're going to review what you did the past two weeks. And say, okay, oh, okay, so um, I did this and this is what I accomplished and everything like that, right? You review that and then you say, okay, now I need to think about, um, you know, it's retrospect, how those two weeks went. Could I have done something better? What went well? What went wrong? Um, what did I like? What I didn't like, right? There, and there's so many different ways. Like, and I will show you a bunch of tools they can use. Like, and, and guess what? A lot of these tools, they don't really, they don't cost anything, right? Some of them, they might be paid, but they don't really cost anything. You can do, you can manage your life as, um, in an agile way. And what does agile mean, right? It means like you're able to pivot and you're able to adjust, right? You can manage your life in an agile way and 
look back and do retrospectives. And then once you do that, then you're okay, now I need to plan for my next sprint. What are the things that I'm going to bring in, right, for my next sprint? And you can have a backlog of all the things that you need to do to accomplish your goals. Say, okay, now I can bring these things into my next sprint, right? And I can, um, and, and this is this is this is the level of effort it's going to take. This is what I this is what I can um, this is what I can do for these next two weeks. And then you start the cycle all over again. You start a new sprint, and you're saying um, you're saying in this new sprint, right? You're doing your daily standups, and then after the two weeks is done, then you're going to go back. You're going to review what you did. You're going to um, do a retrospective on how those two weeks went, and then you're going to plan for the next sprint. And the cycle goes on and on and on and on. And and guess what, right? Now you have structure to your life. You're not just swinging it. And at the end of the year, you can look back at all the stories that you accomplished, all the tasks that you accomplished, where you're at, and, and, and now you have measurables and, 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 and you have KPIs. But we're not, at, we're not at the year end yet, right? Every quarter, you need to do a quarterly review to say, okay, how did this quarter go, right? And it's like, it's like you're doing a, a review of, all the sprints in that quarter, and you're saying, okay, how did it go? Am I on track to meet my my like my yearly goal? You're looking at your your key performance indicators to see how that's going, right? And and you're just tracking and you're saying, okay, okay, this sprint this this quarter was um was a hit, it was a miss, uh, it could have been better, it could have like it, it, like you know, and, and you're just tracking that, right? And now you're like, okay, cool. Now we're going to the next quarter. We know how we did last quarter. Let's try to focus on getting even doing even better in the next quarter. And I guarantee you this, right? If you implement that structure, you will see that you will accomplish your goal that you set for whatever, however length it is, a lot faster, right? So let's say the goal for the year, because let's say you have a five-year goal, right? But now we're going to say, by year one, we want to do this. By year two, we want to do this. By year three, you'll see that the goal that you hit for the first, like since you started, you're going to get there a lot faster and you're going to be a lot wiser and you're going to have a lot better strategy, right? And so then now, if you get there, if, if, you, if you accomplish your, your year one goals in like eight to nine months, right? Guess what? We can get started into year two. And maybe if you are focused and you, you keep it up, you keep it up, you keep it up, right? You might actually end up accomplishing your five-year goal in three years. And you are in a much better spot. And then along the way, you will see no other opportunities. And you might have you might have to pivot on some things, whatever the case may be, right? But if you do not structure your life as a business and you implement the proper processes to get there, you'll never actually get to, to the opportunities that 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 a lot that that um that await you, right? You'll never get to those opportunities. And that's why I say you need to structure it as a business, make business decisions in every single thing that you do, right? It is a business decision, period. Right, and, and that's how you have to see it. That's how you have to think about it. And I and, and I can guarantee you, right, that you will see so much success. Whether it's whether you're applying for jobs, whether you're 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 in school, whether you're in a relationship, whether like whether you are working, right. It's like you can't let only the company that you work for or the business that you have be what you have a business mind about, right? And that what what is your and what leads you? No, you need to have it for your own self. Even like even when you're working, right? You need to see yourself as a business, as, and and you have to be the best representation of yourself that's possible, right? You want to grow, you want to go forward in everything that you do. So if you apply the business concept to everything, you will see everything else, right? It's going to it's going to have that um. It's going to have that success that you're looking for, right? So many people can be so successful in business, but everything else in their life. They like it's not working, and that's because they don't apply the concepts that they apply to their business to everything else, right? So that is the way that um so so that's the way that I see it. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Am I off on this? Right? Maybe you totally disagree, and if so, I would love to see um to um see like interact with me in the comments, right? Let me know if I'm off, if you agree, whatever the case may be, right? But to close this off, I really really think that if you try it out and you apply the business mind to everything that you do, right? You will see great success and you will, you'll, you'll go like how they say, right? Shoot for the stars and reach the moon. Just give it a try. Give it a try. Let me know how it goes. I am so anxious to hear from you, right? But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time that we go live, 
like the video, share the video, share it with everyone, share it with your friends, share it with everyone, and check out the Patreon at www.techcoachrob.dev so you can get some more exclusive content where I will be breaking down how to implement the Agile methodology, how to use the tools that, um, that, I've, that I was talking about so that you can have a structured life and you can be, you can be on your road to success, right? So check it out. Uh, I hope to see you in there. But until next time, this has been another episode of Candid Conversations hosted by your truly Tech Coach Ralph, where we are engineered to win. And on that note, this is Tech Coach Ralph signing off. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.